Forget this week's releases, forget what's coming up over the holiday period. This is our last episode, so we're going to put our lack of money where our pie holes are as Shannon and I reveal our 10 favorite films of all time. Oh yeah, going back to the Big Bang. It's all inclusive, baby. We're back. We are. We're back in the very same place where we did our very first review segment all those two years ago. Yes. And what a classic it was. It was Unaccompanied Minors. Yeah. And that made us uh, a bit ill, I think, from memory. I think I forgot the title of the film by the end of the reviews, but anyway. Yeah, it wasn't too good. Anyway, it's a circle of life. We're back. Uh, we're going to do our all-time best films, favourite films, rather. Sorry, let me yeah. correct myself. Yeah. Ever. Who's going first? Am I going first? You, you, well, you know how I resisted I was to this, so you go first. Okay, yeah, so there, we should preface it. Yeah, it was very, very tough uh, to come up for me. Yeah. Uh, a top five I got very, very easily, very, Same. very quickly. Mm. Um, but then the next five was, it changes every day. Mm. You wake up in a different mood and you go, no, that's got to be pushed out. I like this film now and I like this film better and that one, got, yeah, anyway. So I got a top five very easily and a bottom top five was much, much, much more difficult. I had the so, same problem. So, but let's start anyway. Let's start. Bottom top five. Bottom top five. Um, uh, this might shock a few people. Martin Scorsese uh, is not in my top five, which is... Really? Uh, I know. I feel shame. I feel deep shame. Uh, wow. There's the holy, the holy trinity of Taxi Driver, Raging Bull and Goodfellas, uh, which are three films that are, are works of art and mm. I, uh, I adore them uh, so much, but I couldn't split them. Uh, which turned out to be a good thing because there's a film I love even more than those three. A Scorsese film. A Scorsese film that I love even more than those three and uh, and even that, oh geez, that makes me feel dirty saying that. But the film is... Kundun. Oh. Casino. Kundun's very good actually. It is. I like Kundun. <laughs> but because there's no Casino. And Casino I think is, jeez, uh, it works, it works so well. I think it gets unfairly uh, undervalued mm. yeah. because it's not as flashy as Goodfellas. A lot of people think of it as Goodfellas died Goodfellas. Uh, which I think is unfair, mm. but it's uh, it's a lot more depressing uh, than Goodfellas. It's yeah. it's nowhere near as fun as to watch as Goodfellas. But I just absolutely love it, and uh, that's the Scorsese film I would choose. And I can't believe it's it, it's not the other three. I own posters to the other three. I don't own a poster to this. I and know. it's uh, it's all out of whack. <laughs> it, the, up is down, black is white. What's next? <laughs> okay. Two of the best. Uh, two of the best. Let's make that distinction. Comedies of all time mm. are also two of my favourite films of all time, and yep. I had real trouble splitting these two, so I didn't. Uh, I put them both in at the expense of some other films. Uh, one of them is a film that really has informed my humour throughout my whole life. Yeah. It's, a it's a film that just is totally wacky and uh. silly, is, uh, is flying high. Yep. Um, yeah, it just, yeah. This and like Mad Magazine is uh, films that I watched sort of in my youth or mm. films, media in my youth that just, yeah, that totally yeah. informed who I am and, and my sense of humor. And this is one of them. The other comedy is very, very different. Uh, very, very different type of humor, but nonetheless, still very funny. Twenty Parts of Life of Brian, yeah? I knew it, I, yeah, I yeah? guess that. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, yeah, this is yeah, very much different humor. But, and I think it's, it's got a lot more polish than Holy Grail, mm. uh, which can be good or bad. Um, and the ending of Holy Grail, I just love. To have the balls to do an ending like that is yeah. just incredible. But the ending of this, if you can have a crucifixion and tap your toe to it, I mean, that, that's, that's staggering. That mm. really is staggering. So Life of Brian gets my vote for a Monty Python film. Yeah. Uh, there's a film which I don't even own on DVD that's in my bottom top five. And, uh, but I do have the soundtrack. And my yeah. God, people are gonna yell at me for putting this above Taxi Driver and Goodfellas. The film's Grease. I had to be true to myself. I really no, had that's to, good. I really had to be true. And but I, you should be ashamed. I know, I should be ashamed. Yeah. This is a, uh, oh my God. Yeah, it's so dirty, this film. It's something I never realized. I mean, it's very, yeah. very funny. There's some great lines in it and the music's fantastic and all the rest of it. But yeah. something I never realized until I was about 18, 19. It's so dirty. Yeah. It's really filthy, and uh, so that makes it kind of fun. Then the test that I almost use for choosing these films is that if any of these were on TV, 
you know, if, if Grease was on TV yeah. and Goodfellas was on TV, this is a shocking thing to admit, which one would you watch? And I have to say, I would watch Grease. Wow. <laughs> I would be watching Grease on TV. On TV. It was at the movies, maybe something else. But it was I'm on learning TV. a lot about you right now. Well, there That's we go. There's amazing. Going. And there's so much more to go. Um, here's a film that I saw. This will give it, I know we'll give it away. Some clues. 1998. I saw it at Greater Union in the city. Mm. And. It, it, it threw me a little bit. I mean, it was funny, kind of. Its tone was very, very odd. Uh, its style was very, very specific. Um, and but with each viewing, it gets so much richer. It gets it gets so much, infinitely better with every viewing. Yeah. And it's Rushmore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just an incredible, an incredible movie. My uh, my favourite of all Wes Anderson's films. Yeah. And yeah, when I started trying to figure out this list. This, this really kept popping up. I'm like, surely that's not in there. Surely that's not in my top 10. And it really, really is. I just, yeah, I think it's a, and a wonderful movie. And it's yeah. got Bill Murray in, it, uh, in top form, who's my favorite as well. All right, top five. These are in no order, uh, except for the, the first one. Yep. All right, I'll start with um, what's probably a perfect film. I think it's a perfect film. There's no slack in this at all. It's just, yeah, it, it's so the, the economy of direction in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. How we can achieve so much doing so little, and you look at his films now, and it's such, it's such a, a it's a vast difference. And Spielberg of Jaws, Close Encounters, Jewel, Raiders, and the Spielberg of Munich, Saving Private Ryan, all the rest of it. I think mm. it's it's really quite depressing. I think he had so much guts when he was young, and I, th I guess it comes with youth. And this film is just, God, I love it. Yeah, it's a perfect movie. Yeah, you, you couldn't take anything out of this film yeah. and make it better or yeah. add anything. It's just, it's absolutely perfect. I agree with that. So we got Raiders. Um, we've got a film I saw in 1998 for the first time in Brisbane. It was a, uh, a 25th... You got around a lot in 98, I did. didn't you? This, is, uh, early, this was early in 1998. Um, it was a re-release. It's the 25th anniversary re-release at the cinema. And I knew nothing about it. All I knew was the tagline. And I sort of knew it vaguely by reputation and all I knew was the tagline. The tagline is like a septic tank explosion has to be seen to be believed. And the film is not that one, it's Pink Flamingos. Huh. Pink Flamingos, I, I kid you not, this was, it's a genuine jaw dropping film for me. It was, I, I was, and I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. It was, I was watching going, like that. It's like, what the hell is this movie? What are these people doing? Why are they doing that? How is this even a movie? <laughs> but all in the most joyous possible way, you were asking these questions. It, it blew my mind quite, quite genuinely. It's, it's so good. And it's also very inspirational, I think, too, because he got his friends, he just wrote this thing, his friend said, yep, I'll do that, no worries. And he just, it, I don't know who the audience for this film is, he and his friends, and he just went out and shot it. And that's the kind of thing that I, I really respond to. Yeah. So yeah, I, I love Pink Flamingos. Pink Flamingos is great. Um, oh geez, okay. Uh, I'm gonna get grief for this one too. This is no, by no means the funniest film of all time or uh, best performances or anything like that. But I have to, it got me through year 12. Uh, it got me through senior school um, is Caddyshack. Uh, sorry, guilty pleasure. I yeah. had to be true to myself, and this is this is just genius. How, Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, Rodney Dangerfield, Ted Knight, all absolutely hitting it out of the park in the one film. Yeah, it's not the funniest film. It's nowhere near as funny as Flying High or Life of Brian, but mm. God, I love this movie so much. Okay. So Chevy, uh, Caddyshack has to be in the top five. Has to be in the top five. There's a film, geez, I saw this at a very, very young age. I saw this at like five or six years old. Um, which very well could explain why I am the way I am, and I'll be eternally grateful for that. The film's The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's got incredible music, and it's uh, a homage to all the old, old 50 sci fi films. It's just, yeah, I just love it. I just love it a lot. And yes, could very well be the reason why I'm such a uh, screw up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least we know what the reason is. Exactly, yeah. yes, and I'm happy for that forever. But of course, the number one film. And this is number one. This is number one. Yeah. It, it shouldn't come as any surprise, I don't think, to you. Oh, Star Wars. Yeah. It's so um, it, it's it's quite generic now, unfortunately. It's quite a uh, a cliche thing to say. But this is the film that made made films for me. You know, it's uh, mm -hmm. as it did for everybody, millions yeah. of people the world over. Yeah. And also the film that, you know, made me wonder how how films are made. You know, and maybe get the special effects. Why do they do that? How do they do that? And all the mm -hmm. rest of it. So this is yeah, it's a seminal film for so many people. Yeah. I'm one of them. So, yeah. There you That's go. That's my top ten. Wow. I think it's quite 
I think it's pretty good. It's I'm a diverse list. I'm happy with all those 10, yeah. Mm. 